Hello, everyone. My name is Michael. I work for the San Francisco Public Library, and my co-host Kate is here as well, too. Hi. So today, we're going to go over introduction to QR codes. So as you can see, there is a QR code right here on the slide, and I will explain what that is and how to scan it later on today. So the agenda for today is I'm going to go over what are QR codes, the purpose of a QR code, what is needed to scan a QR code, how to scan a QR code with like a smartphone or tablet, and the different types of QR codes, and if you're interested, how to create a QR code using a free website. So what are QR codes? So QR stands for like quick response code, and it's kind of like a two-dimensional version of like a barcode. And I have an example right here on the right-hand side of your screen. So this is a typical QR code. You might see this at like a store or like on a flyer or online. So this is kind of like the common like image of QR code, but there are a lot of different ways of kind of showing the QR code as well too or like designing a QR code. It's usually made up of like black and white pixels, but it could have like different colors and it might have like image in the middle of your QR code. And it was introduced to the public in 1994 by a company called Denso Wave. It's a Japanese automotive company. So they created this because they uh, required like a better or faster way and like stronger technology for tracking auto parts. And QR codes at the time when they created this was kind of like, like a quicker way of kind of scanning and tracking like auto parts. And a typical QR code can store up to like 7,089 digits or 4,296 characters. And that's including punctuation marks and special characters. And a QR code is readable with an app on a smartphone or a tablet with a camera. So usually like a new smartphone, there should be like a camera app. And within the camera app, there should be an option for you to select for scanning QR codes. And since there are many manufacturers out there of smartphones, it might be a little bit different. Certain ones might have the option for you to select or certain ones, they don't have the option for you to select, but it has the ability to scan a QR code and you would just have to activate the camera and it automatically knows that it is a QR code. And I've seen some smartphones and tablets which have a camera, but they don't have that option where you could choose to scan QR codes and it's not automatic that they could scan your QR code. So there's a little bit more work for those devices. And for those devices, you have to download like a third party app from like the Google Play Store, if you have like an Android device, or if you have like an Apple or an iPhone device, then you have to download it from the Apple App Store. So what is the purpose of a QR code? So it's used as like a marketing technique. So if you've seen like flyers on the street where they're advertising certain things, there might be a QR code like on the bottom somewhere. It's a scan here for more information. And it's kind of like a form of like a quick information. So the information might be like a website, it might be like contact information, and sometimes a website could be, the address could be very long and you don't have like a pen and paper and you, you just want to know that information. And when you scan the QR code, that QR code will give you that information, like to the link to like website and that will be on your device, like the link address on like a flyer. And it's not really uh, limited to flyers. So it's pretty much everywhere now. So I think Kate mentioned before, it went away in the past a little bit, but now it's very prevalent because of the pandemic. So usually a QR code will contain like links to websites or like email information or contact information or just like basic text. Like you have like a line that's embedded in the QR code. And when you use your smartphone or tablet to scan it, it will just show you like a line of words. You can say, hi, how are you? Or you have like a google.com or sfpo.org or like a phone number. And also a QR code is used as a way to track information. So companies could put out like QR codes and they could track like how many people have scanned these QR codes. So it's a way for them to know that is this a way of kind of advertising working or not? Or are people actually reading their flyers or scanning their QR codes? And they could see like, oh, maybe a hundred people have scanned it or like 10 people or zero people have scanned it. So it would be like a way for them to see like, oh, this is working or this is not working. And also QR codes are used to kind of like resend and receive money. So one of the more well-known companies is Venmo. So if you've wanted to like send money to like your friend or your family member, or if you go out with your friends and you go out to like a restaurant where there's like five people and you like want to split the bill, but you don't have cash on you. So you just ask them, oh, do you have Venmo? And if they do, they'll show you like a QR code and you scan the QR code with your app or on your smartphone or tablet and you can send them money like that. And also, QR codes are used as point of sale. So you could set up like an account with like Venmo and you could go to like a store and they accept like QR codes as like a form of payment. So you could scan that QR code at the store and they will charge whatever account you have associated with that QR code in your account. 
and you could buy things like that. And also certain stores, they use QR codes as a way of like redeeming deals. So they might give you like a QR code where you have to go into the store and you let the cashier scan it. Then they'll give you like a sale item or they will give you like a free item. So that's one way of using QR codes as well too. So what is needed to scan a QR code? So normally you would have like a phone or a tablet and within the phone or tablet, you will have a camera and within that camera, you'll have a camera app. And usually, like I mentioned earlier, camera apps, they have a feature where you could use it to scan QR codes. And sometimes you need to select that option, but sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's kind of uh, already in there. So you just have to use your camera, point it at a QR code and something will happen. It will let you know like what is this QR code and where is it pointing to. But if you have a device that doesn't have an uh, option to select to scan QR codes, or even if you don't have it and you try to scan a QR code, nothing happens, then that means that that app on your device doesn't have the ability to scan a QR code. And that is when you would have to go and download a third party app. And you would go to the Apple App Store if you have like an iPhone or an iPad, or you would go to the Google Play Store if you have like an Android device. Okay, so scanning QR codes. So what does it take or what's the process? So normally you have your device. I have kind of like a sample image right here on the left side. You activate the camera on your device and you will aim your device at a QR code and it will scan it. And once it scans it, it will direct you to wherever it's trying to direct you to. So normally it would go to like a website and you will click on that link and you will go directly to the website on your device. Okay, demonstration time. So I'm going to scan a QR code right now so you can see how it will look like. So on your screen right now, you should be seeing an image of my iPad. So it might look a little bit different if you have like an Android device, but I'm gonna use iPad for today's demonstration. So first I'm gonna locate the camera icon on here. So I have it right here. So I'll tap on the camera icon. So it's gonna activate the camera for my iPad. And now I'm going to try to scan a QR code. So actually I have many QR codes right here. So I'm just gonna scan one of them first. So notice that I didn't select any option to scan QR codes. It automatically kind of knew that it is a QR code. And you can see near the top of your screen, there should be a little bar that says open and then it says open sfpl.org in Safari. So this QR code directs you to our main website, sfpl.org. And that's how you would scan a QR code from your device and go to wherever it's pointing you to. Uh, Michael, quick question is relevant here. So to get to this point, did you open up your camera app on the iPad? Yes. So all I had to do is open the camera app on my iPad. And there's no options to select QR code anywhere. So it kind of knows that it will recognize the QR code. And that will be the same with Android, correct? For certain ones. So certain ones you have to select a QR code from the, the list of options because it doesn't know what you want to scan. Mm -hmm. And certain ones it's kind of automatic like the iPad as well too. Because there's so many versions of Android out there and so many like manufacturers, each of them have their own way of configuring their camera app and the options as well. But no matter what, you're starting by opening your camera app on an Android or on an Apple, right? Yes, but there is a small occasion where you might not have the ability to do that and you will have to download a third party app. So now I'm scanning this, but notice that I'm not actually taking a photo of it. So I could actually move to like a different QR code and it will direct me to a different website. So all of these are different websites, but notice that on the top of your screen, it kind of says sfpo.org. So it doesn't really display all the information from the link because all of these go to our, our website, but different pages in our website. Michael, another question that might be relevant for this moment. So when you're aiming the camera at the QR code you want to scan, are you kind of centering the code in the, in the frame? Yes. So if you have multiple QR codes, then you would try to center it in the frame in the middle. So usually that's like the default area that it will kind of try to locate. But if you have like QR code on the side, it might also recognize that as well too, but it's better to aim it in the middle. So I'm going to, I'm gonna click on the message on the top and it's gonna bring me to whatever's on the QR code. And I think that's a really important point is that you've scanned the QR code and you know it worked when it offers you the opportunity to go to that website. Yes. 
So if it didn't work, then it will not let you know, like, oh, this is not the website or this is not the information. But like I mentioned earlier, QR codes don't have to send you to websites. They could have other information as well, too, like the email or like a phone number or just like a line of text. And so that QR code brought us to the bridge uh, main website right here, with all the information. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go back to the camera and I'm gonna scan a different one. So I'm aiming the QR code in the middle. So it's gonna scan this QR code right here. And are you trying to get the entire code within the yellow box there? Yes. So normally uh, your app will kind of recognize the QR code and it will kind of adjust. So like if I'm moving to the side right here, you can see the yellow box is kind of adjusting as well. But if I move a little bit to the left, it sees that there is another QR code right here and it will adjust to that one as well too. So I'm gonna try to scan this QR code right here. And I'm gonna tap on the information near your top. It says sapo.org as well too. Does everybody see that little bubble that's appearing at the top saying like, go to this website? Great comment from Peter in the chat. By scan QR code, I assume you'd mean just point phone at it, right? And yeah. When we say the term scan, you're, you're scanning, but you're not actually taking a photo of it. So it brought us to this website right here, which is our calendar with like upcoming events from SFPL as well. So I'm gonna go back. So earlier I mentioned that QR codes kind of have like a kind of like a generic image, but then it could be different uh, images as well too. So on this page right here, I created at least seven QR codes using a QR code generator. And I got the option of choosing what would my QR code look like? So normally a QR code might look like this. I'm using my finger to point at it, but you have other options as well too. So you can make your QR code look like this, or like this, or like this. You could change certain things about it. Like in the middle, it looks a little bit different. The three dots on the side, you can make it look different. So you have all these options and I'm sure there's many, many more as well too, but I've chosen only these seven right here. What button do you press after you've scanned? So after I activate my camera on my device, for example, today on my iPad, I will choose this QR code right here. And after that, can you see the little message near the top of your screen in the middle? It says open SFPO in Safari. So that is where I'll tap on. It will, it will open whatever's in my QR code and it will open up in your browser. So just a clarification, once you scan the QR code and you get that little bubble on top you're not automatically taken to the site you're not but i'm sure there's some phones that act a little bit differently but normally you're not automatically uh, brought to that site so you would just have to scan it first and then you have to click on something to actually get to the site but that's how you would do a scan with your default camera so i'm going to show you how to use a third-party app to scan a qr code as well too so on your screen right here you should be seeing like a whole bunch of apps on my screen. And I have a QR code reader icon near the bottom of the middle of the page. And it says QR code reader. And I download the app from the Apple App Store. And there's many apps out there, but I just chose like a random one. So I'm gonna tap on QR code reader and it's gonna activate the app. So it activated the app. And it kind of looks very similar to like the camera app, but this app kind of focuses on scanning QR codes. And notice that it's a little bit different for the app. So once I aim camera at a QR code, it automatically brought me to the actual website. So that's one different thing versus like the default camera app, because each of these uh, QR code scanners, they're made by different companies and they have like different functions. So certain ones automatic, certain ones are not. So I'm going to try to scan the same one again up here. As you can see, it kind of automatically detected the QR code and it automatically brought me to the, the location of where the QR code is wa wanting to send me to. So try one more. So it brought me to this link right here within my other QR code. 
And this is just one app that's available out there. So if you download like a different app, then you might have like a different view. So the app I'm using right now, I believe it's only available for iPhones, but if you go to the Google Play Store and you look for QR code readers, there's gonna be a lot there. And you have to look through the list to see which one kind of fits your needs. And a way of doing that is you can read the reviews, you can see, have people said good things about it? If they said yes, then you might wanna download that. If they say no, you might consider like a different app as well. So let me go over that one more time. So I'm using the QR code reader, which I downloaded. So this is not like the default camera app. So this is like a third party QR code reader. I'll activate it. And once I activate it, it's gonna bring me to the screen right here. You should see something similar on different apps as well too. It will usually activate your camera and it's gonna wait for locate like a QR code within the four like corners right here. And for this app, it's kind of automatic. So if it sees a QR code, it will scan it and it will automatically bring you to that link that it's directing you to. So I have a lot of QR codes on the screen right here. So I'm trying not to scan all of them. So that's how you scan it. So imagine that you're using this and you're at a restaurant and the restaurant doesn't have menus and they have just a QR code for you to scan to get to the menu. So you activate this app on your device and you'll scan it and it will redirect you to the link where they have the menu and you can view the menu on your device. Okay, and that's how you would scan a QR code using a third party app. Is there any way to know if a QR code you may scan is safe? The question is about safety. So. If you're scanning a QR code, it's kind of redirecting you to a website and you don't know what kind of website it's directing you to. So like for that third-party app that I just used, I scanned it and it automatically uh, kind of brought me to the third-party website. And sometimes you might not want to automatically go there. So you might use a different app and it will not kind of directly bring you there. So you can scan it, you can actually see like what's the URL and you can see like, is this a safe URL or not? Interesting. Is there a way to scan a QR code without saving the info to your device? I don't think the code itself saves, right? No. So you could take a photo of the QR code, but what if you're scanning the QR code, you're, you're scanning it like lifetime and it's just going to redirect you to whatever information there is. So it's not really saving it on your device. Interesting use case here. Someone is interested in using QR codes to place on storage boxes and tie it to a Google Docs inventory. Oh. Do most QR codes work only with Safari or does the browser matter when you're scanning a QR code? It doesn't really matter. So for example, for today, I've used an iPad and on my iPad, the default browser is Safari, but you can have an iPad and you will change your default browser to like Chrome or Firefox and it will normally open up whatever website it's directing you to. So it really doesn't matter which browser you have. It's just like which is your default browser and it will kind of aim towards that. I love this question. What are the differences between QR codes and barcodes? So QR codes are two dimensional versions of a barcode. So a barcode could only hold so much information and that's why the creators of the QR code created the QR code. They wanted more information to be held in the QR code. One more time, what does QR stand for? It stands for quick response. If you have a QR code to get a deal at a store, can someone else reuse the same QR code and get the same deal? It really depends on the company. So if let's say the company gives you a QR code, that QR code might be only associated with you and it might be unique. So you might redeem it first. And then if you have someone else try to redeem it, then they might not be able to because it's only unique to you. And the company knows that it's been used or the company could give you a QR code it's kind of like a generic one where it's like a free use coupon. So in theory, other people can use it as well too, but I haven't seen those. So I've only seen the ones that are kind of made for you and your account. And then um, on terms of QR code scanning apps, we don't really make recommendations, but do you um, have any that don't, do you know of any that don't automatically open the website and or might be good for Android? I don't know one on top of my head, so I've used a couple of them. And usually the third party ones I've seen, the ones I've used are kind of automatic, but I've seen ones that are not automatic, but you will have to do a search in the Google Play Store 
and you have to read like the description of the app. And if it doesn't say, you might just have to download it and see if it fits your needs or not. If it does, you can keep it. If it doesn't, you can always uninstall it and go back to the Google Play Store and try to download a, a different app. And back on the um, how to avoid scanning like a virus QR code or a QR code that's trying to take you to a bad spot. What are some signs you can look for in the website that it tells you it's taking you to um, that would tell you, give you a clue that maybe this website wasn't so safe? So some of the signs are... Maybe a bit.ly. That could be one sign, but there could be some actual legitimate sites that use the bit.ly as well too. If the URL is pointing you to like a foreign site, mm -hmm. then you might be kind of skeptical about that. Like, so if you're looking at uh, like a flyer and you know the company, but then when you scan the QR code, it doesn't really direct you to the company website or it doesn't look like anything with the company name on it, then you might be skeptical as well too, because it might be like a fake flyer where someone's trying to use a different company name and logo, and it's trying to redirect you to a different site where they're trying to capture your information. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. If you think you're scanning a QR code for Walgreens, then the website that your phone is offering to send you to should look like it's from Walgreens, right? Yeah. Yes, or if you see a flyer, it's kind of advertising like an event and you're trying to scan it and it's bringing you to like a website which you've never seen before. And if you really can't tell from the web website address, you can look on the website as well too. You can see like, are there misspellings on the website or is there anything that stands out that you might think that it's not real? And that's usually like a, a good indication. So misspelling or asking you for your social security number or your credit card information, you would think first before entering that into the website. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna go over is creating a QR code. So I went over how to scan a QR code and some of you might not need to create a QR code, but I think it's kind of helpful to see how to create one. So in the future, if you like have like a business or you want someone to go to like a link on your flyer, then you might want to create a QR code as well. So there are different types of QR codes. So there's static QR codes, and there's dynamic QR codes and static QR codes, uh, the information in there is fixed and you can't really edit the information on there. But there are dynamic QR codes where information can be updated and edited. So um, usually people use that for like marketing purposes for like similar items or services. But if it's just like for a one-time thing, then people might use the static QR code. So which one should you choose if you want to create one? So usually... Uh, if you go to like the free websites, they will let you create a QR code for free. And usually that is the static QR code where it, the information is fixed. So if you try to create a one that goes to our website, sfpl.org, then that QR code, once it's done, it's fixed. You can't change it. But if you create a dynamic QR code, usually the websites will ask you to create an account because you might want to change it in the future or you want to track like how many people have scanned your QR code and gone to your website. And that's where you would choose a dynamic QR code. So there are many QR code generators out there and some of them are good, some of them are bad, but I've chosen two on your screen right here. And their addresses are qrcodemonkey.com and qrcodegenerator.com. And I'm gonna go to one of these right now. So if you decide to use this, it's good, but if not, then you could choose like a different website. And usually uh, QR code generator websites, they're free, but then they have ads in there as well too. And they have restrictions. So they might have like a premium option where you will pay like a fee and you could do more things to your QR code or you could remove ads or you could change the color or you could add like photos to it. But for today, I'm going to go over how to create a free QR code. So once you get to this website right here, you should see kind of like the main interface. So near the top right here, you have all these options. So you could create a QR code for like a URL or a text or email, phone, and many of these as well too. So I'm going to create one for URL, which is right here. So Kate, is there a website that you would like me to go to or create a QR code for? Um, our e-learning page. Okay, so. So I'm typing in my URL right here. So I'm trying to create a URL for this link right here, which goes to our e-learning page. And notice on the bottom of this address bar right here, there's an off button that says uh, statistics and editability. So like I mentioned earlier, there's static QR codes and there's dynamic QR codes. And right now it's gonna create a static QR code where it's gonna only direct me to this link right here. But if I choose on right here, 
it's going to create like a dynamic QR code where I could change it in the future as well. And I could track like how many people have scanned it. And once I click on it, it's going to say, you need to sign up for an account, but I'm not going to do that today. And once I select that, I'll go further down on the page. It's going to ask you to set colors. So I mentioned earlier, usually a QR codes are black and white, but you could create QR codes with different colors as well too. So I'm going to click on the little plus sign on the right-hand corner right here, and it's going to activate all these options right here. So right now it's a single color or color gradient or custom eye color. So I'm going to choose color gradient. And the first color is black and the second color is kind of like a bluish. So I'll click on it. I'll change it to, let's see. I'll change it to green. And once I select my color, I'm going to go to the next option right here, which is add logo image. I'll click on the plus sign right here. And you could kind of add like a logo right in the middle of your QR code. So since QR code, they all look the same, sometimes you want it to stand out and you might want to add like a logo in the middle. So you could upload your image or you could choose one of the pre-made images right here. So if your link is going to like a YouTube page, you choose the YouTube logo right here. Or if your link is going to like an email, then you choose like a, like a Gmail icon right here. And there's uh, many of these op options here as well too. So let's say I'll choose this option right here. It kind of looks like a piece of paper with information on it. And once I choose that, I'll scroll down right here. And I'm gonna to go to the next option right here, which is customize design. I'm gonna click on the plus sign right here on the right hand side. So this is where you choose how your QR code will look like. So uh, I showed you earlier the page with uh, the seven QR codes. So the first one I showed you was kind of like the generic one where you might see it all the time on the flyers or like restaurant, but you could change how your QR code looks like. And here's where you would choose. So you could change the body shape. So your QR code is right here. I'm pointing to it with my mouse and you could change what it looks like in the body, which is right here. Right now it's defaulted to this option right here, but if I click on the next option or the next option, it will change the body of the QR code and it will have like design within the middle of it. So let's say I want this option right here. So I'll select this option right here. I'll scroll down. And the next option you can change is the iframe shape. So this changes what um, it looks like for the three boxes on the left-hand corner and one on the top right-hand corner. So one, two, three. So choose how this looks like. So I'll choose this option right here. And the next option would be the eyeball shape, which is the middle of the boxes, which is on the corners. So we'll change it to the shape right here. So once I've chosen all my options and I want to create the QR code, on this website right here, it has option on the right-hand side where you could choose what kind of quality do you want for the QR code. So you want low quality or high quality. So let's say I want high quality. So move the slider to the right-hand side for high quality and I'll select create QR code, which is right here on the bottom. It's gonna indicate it like, like a greenish box. And I'll click on it, create QR code. And it's gonna give me a preview about what the QR code looks like above it. So this is my QR code that I just created right now with all the options. I, so I selected the paper option in the middle. I've selected the box option right here. And I've selected the eye option right here. And I've selected the body option right here and I've selected the color scheme right here. So it's kind of like a greenish black uh, gradient color. Once you decide that this is good, then you will click on download PNG, which is on the bottom right corner. But if you decide that this is not what you want, so this is not downloaded yet, so you always change it. So I'm gonna change it to, let's say this body shape right here on the left-hand side, I'll change it. I'll click create QR code, and it's gonna give me the preview as well. So change what it looks like in the body. And if I'm happy with this, then I'll click on download PNG. And Michael, there's a question. Is there an advantage or disadvantage to choosing a different kind of shape for the code? Uh, not really. So it's mainly for like how you would view it. So if you know like a QR code that it's like the regular image, you might not pay attention to it. So some people might want to attract more attention and that's how you would do it by changing it, changing the color or changing like what it looks like. 
but so sometimes uh, people might be used to like the regular QR code. So if you have something like this on like a flyer, people might not understand that it is a QR code because it looks a little bit different. So that's one of the downfalls is this doesn't really look like a traditional QR code. It looks very cool. I think your QR code is very stylish. When you were choosing between high quality and low quality, is that just about, is that about the code itself or is it about the image density somehow? What does that really mean? So it really depends on what your intentions are for the QR code. So um, I think my colleague mentioned that she uh, walked by a store and they had a QR code on the window, but the QR code was huge. So it was kind of like the size of the actual window, which is like six feet. So I think for that, you would need a high quality QR code. But if you ha have like a regular like flyer, you might not need like a very high quality. You could try low quality as well too. So once you select low quality is 200 by 200 or high quality is 2000 by 2000 pixels. Thank you. Okay, so the QR code should have downloaded to my computer. So let me see if I can open it. Okay, so you should be seeing the QR code that I just created using the website and I've just downloaded the QR code and this is what it looks like. So this is saved to my device. So I could use this on my flyers. I could use this on like a website. I could use this uh, any way I want to kind of advertise that link that I want people to go to. And this is uh, like a static QR code. So it only goes to one place and I can't change it. So if I want to change it, I could just create like a new uh, QR code by going back to the website. Is anyone else but me trying this at home and aiming their phone at the screen? Yes, so this is a perfect time for you to kind of try your new QR code scanning skills. So if you have a phone or like iPad or like a tablet or an Android device, you could try to aim your camera app at the screen right now. And you can see if it's scanning it and if it's directing you to our e-learning page. So the first step is to open up your camera app, aim your camera at your Zoom screen. And you should see the little bubble notification that says tap here to go to sfpl.org. I'm curious if this is working for people. I see one at work. Did it work for anyone else? Seems to have worked for Claudia. Henry got it. Jennifer got it. So it really depends on the size of, of your screen as well, too. Question from Judy. How do you know if it's working? So, so if it's working, then you would see some kind of notification on your screen saying that this QR code is redirecting you to this website or what information is within the website. Yeah, mine says it's a little bubble. It's near the bottom of my camera screen on my phone camera screen. And it says web page tap here to go to sfpl.org. And then when I tap it, I go to our lovely e-learning site. It's okay. Can you mention what kind of device do you have? Oh, uh, this is a Samsung. It's an Android Samsung something or other. As you can see, I've used iPad to scan it, and you've seen that the message is near the top, but Kate used an Android device, and the message is near the bottom. So it really depends on what kind of device you're using as well, too. Uh, all right, so Elaine is not seeing the bubble pop up. Usually when that happens to me, I'm just kind of like sort of adjusting my phone and moving it closer and moving it farther away and like shading the light. My favorite restaurant, the QR code is really hard to scan. <laughs> so I have to keep moving my phone until, until it works. So actually, uh, I'm going to close the screen soon, and I'm going to try to create a different QR code, but not to a website. I'm just going to create a QR code to like information, so you can see how that looks like as well. Okay, so if you haven't scanned this QR code, it's fine. So I'm going to try to get like a different QR code for you to scan and practice as well, too. Okay, so on your screen, you should be seeing um, the web page that I've gone to before, QRMonkey.com. So right here near the top left-hand corner of the page, I've selected the URL, but you can choose any of these other options as well too. So I'm gonna choose text, which is right here. So once I select text, it's gonna ask you where is the content or do you wanna enter your content? And I'm gonna locate the your text option right here on the left-hand side. And right below it, there's a box where I can click on it with my mouse and I'm gonna type in uh, some text. I'm gonna say, So I'm saying, welcome to the QR code class. And after that, it's gonna bring me to all the options that I've gone over earlier before. You can set the colors. So I'll select a different color. So I'll go to foreground color 
I'll go to color gradient. I'm going to select orange color right here. After that, I'm going to go to add logo image, which is near the bottom right here. I'll click on the plus sign on the right hand corner. And I had this image before, but I'm going to choose a different one. So let's see. So let's say I'm going to choose like the Wi Fi logo right here. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to go back to customize design. I'll click on that. And I'll choose a different design from right here. I'll choose this one right here. I'll click on it. And I'll choose a different iframe shape. So I'll choose, see, I'll choose this one right here. And I'll choose a different eyeball shape. I'll choose this option right here. And once I'm done with all my choices, I'll scroll back up. I'll go back to the right hand side of the screen. I'll locate the create QR code option right here on the bottom. And I'll click on create QR code and it's going to change my QR code and give me a new preview of it. So right now on your screen, you should be seeing the new preview of the QR code that I just made. But this QR code doesn't really bring you to a website. It just gives you information. So I'm going to download it. And once it downloads, I'm going to open it on the screen and you could try scanning it with your phone or tablet and you can see what like what information it has brought you. Okay, so you should be seeing this on your screen right here. This is gonna be the new QR code. And you could try scanning this and see what does it show you. It should show you that message that I written before, like welcome to the QR code class. Some people got it. For some people it's not scanning. One person says, it says web search in Safari, no message. Frank says it sends to notes and says, welcome to the QR code class. So for the one that it sends you to Safari, it scans it, but then if you don't click on the little message, it should give you like what the message is. So you don't have to click on that link, which brings you to Safari. So after a question, after you see the QR code on your phone camera, then what? Can you just review what should happen there? Well, let me show you what it looks like. So let's see. Charles says, I only get welcome to. Does everybody know you have to touch on the bubble? Like you have to touch on the little bubble that talks about the website you're going to go to, to go to that site. So on your screen right here, you should be seeing one on my iPad. And I'm going to go to my camera app. Oh, wow. This is meta. Do you see how the yellow brackets around the QR code or the phone has sort of centered, the camera on the phone has centered in around that code in the middle. And then can everyone see up top how a little bubble appeared and it said text QR code, search web and Safari contents. Welcome to the QR code class. So if the QR code is not directing you to like a website, then you don't have to click on that little message in your top because once you click on it, it's going to go to Safari and it's going to search for those terms within the QR code. And so the next step to get to the site that's linked to that QR code is to touch that bubble up top, right? Yes, if it's directing you to like a website. Mm -hmm. So I'll click on it. And we can't QR... see Michael's finger doing that, but that's what he did. He touched it. So that QR code that I just get is not to like a website. So it's only to that one sentence. And mm -hmm. once I click on Safari, it's going to search for that sentence within my browser, which it goes to your default like search engine, which is uh, Google for me. Yeah, so at the bottom of the page where you're designing the QR code, there's uh, there are three choices after the uh, line that says download and create. Right, so .svg, .pdf, asterisk, .eps, asterisk. What what are those? Do we need to get involved with those at all? These are just the, like the different format that you could download to QR code too. Would we want to do it, save it as a PDF so that we could print it out or something? If you want to print it out, yes. But okay. usually if you're creating like a QR code, then you're trying to like insert it into like your other project. So you might got have it, it. like yeah, a yeah, flyer yeah. somewhere. So you yeah. would normally download it as a PNG. Yeah, if you were to download it as SVG or EPS, those won't open as widely. Like I think EPS only opens in, I wanna say Photoshop or Adobe software. For EPS, uh, there's no support for like other thank color you. gradients. So. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Charles asks, what is the upside of making a low quality QR code? 
I think I've displayed it on your screen right here before. So this was the first QR code that I just uh, I created earlier, and this was in high quality. So it's kind of big on your screen right here, right? But if you go back to the other QR code that I created, it was a low quality one. So it's a lot smaller. Okay, so on your screen right now, it is the high quality one, but I'll change it to the low quality, which is right here. So it's a lot smaller. So if it's a lot smaller and you're trying to create like a big flyer, then the quality might not be great. So you normally you would try to create like a high quality one just in case. Thank you, Michael, so much for this tour of QR codes. I'm amazed at how many things you can do when you make your own QR code too. That's crazy. Some general questions about why people would create a QR code. Like why would somebody who doesn't have a business, average user, create a um, QR code? So I think someone mentioned earlier that they want to do some storage and you could just create like a QR code for your storage boxes. And it, it doesn't really say on the box like what it is. So you have to scan it. That's one way of kind of keeping your things like private. Potluck sign up maybe. Just put the QR code out there. A question from Valerie. One link to a Google Doc fix QR to a specific doc. The doc itself can be edited as long as the name of the doc is unchanged. Yeah, right? Like the link is the same, but you yeah. can change what's at that link. Thank you, Michael, for this wonderful tour of QR codes. And thank you everyone for joining us today.